Hey everyone, you just tuned in to the NetSuite podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Fisher. On this episode, we're talking about something all growing businesses face, but typically ignore until, well, it gets so bad they can no longer ignore it. We're talking about system integrations versus replacement. To do so, we'll be joined by Jeff Smith, the founder of Catalyst, a NetSuite consulting firm, and prior to that, a longtime NetSuite user and customer. Smith will dive into some of the big challenges growing businesses encounter that lead to major system integrations and the obstacles that come with those integrations, especially as organizations continue to scale. He'll discuss at what point businesses should really consider replacing a myriad of systems for a unified solution like NetSuite. And on the other hand, he'll explain that not all integrations are the same. Some are necessary for continued growth. And he'll uncover why NetSuite offers a unique platform for that. So stay tuned. That's all coming up next. You're listening to the NetSuite podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. Hi, Jeff. Thanks so much for joining us. No problem at all. So I want to start off by talking a little bit about your own history with NetSuite. You worked for a customer of NetSuite, right? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of my first introduction to NetSuite. I was in the technology industry for just about 20 years, pretty much my whole career. The company I worked for, I was sort of enlisted to go and evaluate systems, ERP being, being one of them. You know, we were doing resale of, of technology products. We were doing services. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. Pretty diverse business. This company is actually a you know a, a family-owned business that's been around for 30 years, and you know unfortunately some of our systems and processes seem to be about that old too. So my job was to jump in and just really analyze everything that we were doing system-wise and kind of bring us up you know bring us up to par with maybe some of our competition and get some modern tools. You know, I went through um, went through the evaluation process, just like you know all NetSuite prospects do these days, mm-hmm. and uh, went through the you know NetSuite evaluation and several other tools, and uh, ultimately, yeah, I landed on and NetSuite as the ERP of choice, and you know added a whole bunch of other things to the solution as well. So it was fun. It was you know interesting experience, definitely to sit on that side of the table, and then you know be doing what I'm doing now. So. Yeah, we're and we're going to dive into what you're doing now in just a second. But I'm um, interested to know. So once you did implement NetSuite with that company, how how did the company use it to continue to grow? Yeah. So the biggest thing for us is that you know we had all these different systems that were sort of interconnected and not interconnected to our our main ERP. You know, one of the things that really stood out to me is that the, it was a pretty much a sales organization, but we had a, a CRM that was part of the ERP. We had uh, a secondary CRM system that was just a CRM. We had uh, sales reps that have Outlook, keeping track of customers. Then we had spreadsheets and other places keeping track of customers. And it, just data was everywhere. And so if we wanted to do anything in terms of you know mass marketing or any kind of analysis of customer activity, it, w- it was impossible. We literally had to take data from our sales reps' phones and filter out, you know, mom and dad and grandma and put them into our new database because that's where the customer information lived. Um, and so that was really a big, you know, inhibitor to growing and actually expanding the market in my mind was that kind of that CRM piece. But in addition to that, you know, having more control and granularity over our services business, because that was a really big piece of growth for us was huge. And again, that was in the past, just kind of managed in spreadsheets or a third party tool and really didn't have any correlation to the billing uh, piece of the equation inside of the ERP. It was all just, hey, this project's done. Somebody go invoice it. And Uh. that was kind of it. So as you can tell, I mean, those types of things aren't really all that scalable. Um, It got the company to a a fantastic place, but at a certain size and scale, you know, that's typically kind of where it falls apart. Yeah, you kind of outgrow those. And then coming in, obviously you did system evaluation for the company, but then after implementing NetSuite, how did you use NetSuite in your day-to-day? 
Yeah. So as um, I was sort of in charge of operations as a whole and, you know, it was for me, it was it was just kind of keeping an eye on everything that was that was moving. There was much better visibility into sales activity and pipeline, things like that, because we got rid of all of the third party activity management and the pipeline spreadsheets and all that. And this was all in one place, you know, on a dashboard. And you can start to see trends after a while, right? You know, month over month, once you use the system, that stuff starts kind of building in. So that's what I was looking at. And then as well as on the services side, we could track utilization in hours um, now in inside of one system. And again, correlate a month of a specific utilization or non-utilization and then look at revenue. Like how how is all that stuff working together? So I think that was the biggest thing for me is just getting that that kind of high level overview. There was also pieces, you know, like budgeting that was interesting that we could we could do now that, you know, we could have actual some targets to go and try to manage to. There was a lot of that. The other things too, and I know we'll talk about integrations later, but we did build some integrations uh, to our system that would allow me to get data from, for instance, our vendors um, coming mm. back into, into NetSuite. We had a couple ancillary quoting tools that were, you know, kind of best in class for our industry. And we fed that data into into NetSuite. And then there's a even a service management tool that we use that we fed back into NetSuite. So I could now use NetSuite as kind of that point to find all that information instead of trying to figure it out from all these other places, then putting it all in one place and getting a management report and be able to, you know, make something of it. So wow. that's how I, I personally use it. Yeah. Really getting the most out of your investment there. Now you're on the other side of things here. Um, you're yeah. the founder of Catalyst, which is a consulting company. To read your LinkedIn, we help you get the most out of NetSuite. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So can, can you tell us a little bit about what your firm does? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, after this experience of being the customer, you know, we had such a good time doing it, did a lot of really cool things. Actually, after a call with one of your NetSuite executives, I um, decided to start a company. We just found that there was a market, especially for us in this industry of, you know, high tech and services and software companies where, you know, they really needed help getting more efficient. You know, we're not typically the ones that go in and sell NetSuite. We're the guys that do the services around it and make NetSuite more efficient. We build integrations, we build customizations. And, you know, after you've been using NetSuite, for a while, as most folks know, there's always an opportunity to, to make tweaks, make improvements. And that's the power of the product is that it can always evolve. Um, it gets better and better as time goes on and as the business changes. And so that's what we do. And um, we've got some very specific products that we made for this technology industry as well. And we built those on top of NetSuite. So they're what you guys call suite apps. But again, it's again leveraging NetSuite, building on top of it for some additional functionality for some very specific, you know, businesses and use cases. So you've worked with a lot of growing businesses, not only in just, you know, with Catalyst, but obviously you've helped businesses in the past continue to grow and scale. What are many of these companies running? Like what systems? I'd say the majority of them are uh, QuickBooks. They're running QuickBooks for their financials. They're also running a tool uh, called ConnectWise Manage. In my space, where I'm doing services in type of companies, um, ConnectWise Manage is very prevalent. It's a very good tool in terms of managing managed services. And honestly, they're using Excel wow. and maybe a third-party CRM, uh, something like that. That That's typically what we see. And there's always stuff we never really see because nobody wants to talk about it. They just want to get rid of it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'd say that's the majority. There's also kind of a, a wave of, you know, folks coming off of Microsoft Great Plains, which is a kind of a legacy Microsoft product that they sold millions of instances of way back when. Um, I That's what we used to use at the last company I was at. And so we see a lot of people coming off of that as well because... It's sort of a shift. Microsoft is, I guess, forcing you to move from that to one of their more modern platforms. And so the customers are out there saying, okay, well, we got to make a change. Let's go evaluate what's out there. Yeah, for sure. I love yeah. that you said there's some things we don't even see because there people just don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, too don't even it's mention like, that. It's like, it's like mentioning that you still have whole milk in your refrigerator and the oat milkers are like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's exa- that is exactly right. That's and we do, see, we do see a lot of that, especially on a you know data imports or something and we get this strange file. We say, where did this come from? <laughs> so. so if they're running on, let's say, a QuickBooks or Excel or what have you, for example, what are the common pain points that they face on these systems as they continue to scale that would then, you know, result in in integrations? You know, I would say it's 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 visibility. 
you know, I really see these, the companies that are, you know, coming off these platforms, you know, they're typically the ones that are growing, right? I guess the companies that that's declining wouldn't make this kind of an investment, but it's tip companies that are growing, that are looking towards the future. And in order to do that, you need visibility into the business and you need to see not just basic financials. You need to measure those really small things, those, those differentiators that only you and your company do that, mm-hmm. that move the needle. Right. And to get that type of analysis, you know, some of those, some of those other tools we mentioned just, just can't really do it. That's not what they're meant for. Right. So I, I just feel like there's kind of this growing up phase and it's that visibility into it and the ability to customize it and to see different dimensions of it, right? Maybe it's very, those are good for just basic, you know, type functions, but it's that in-depth visibility. I'd also say that if there's any type of, call it regulatory requirements or any type of reporting requirements, say if they're acquired by a, a private equity company, you know, they, they need to meet the reporting requirements of that company or if they're in a specific business that's growing and there's federal regulations you have to adhere to. There's things like that, that you need a really flexible platform or a purpose-built platform for that, you know, again, some of those smaller companies can't necessarily uh, accommodate. And I guess the last thing, it's kind of the same as the other point, but the revenue recognition, that's one of the bigger ones that we see, you know, all the time. It's the, you know, the ASC 606 stuff. If you want to get technical, the federal reporting standards, uh, accounting standards that you have to adhere to that, again, some of the enterprise systems can do and maybe some of the smaller ones can't. So... Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, every customer I talk to when they talk about some of the systems they were working on early on these, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and then and then what I also hear is like, in order to overcome those obstacles back in the day when we're talking to customers now, but when they needed to overcome those obstacles, they were sort of like duct taping, if you will, systems together. And I know you've heard of this because we, we chatted a little bit about it before hopping on here. So I, I need you to tell us what's one of the craziest <laughs> things you've seen in this regard, like of system, just weird system integrations or duct taping or whatever. Yeah. So I'll go back to kind of the last place I was at. And, you know, we had a, a bunch of old systems. They were all on premise. You know, they were in a server room and we were in a, you know, a systems integrated reseller. So, you know, we kind of ate our own dog for food. We bought a bunch of servers. We had a little data center and all that stuff. And, um, you know, we had all these systems that we were trying to make talk to each other through kind of traditional on-premise IT. You know, it, that's one thing to manage it, but you know, to give you a story here, we our data center here was actually our air conditioning and our water main lines were kind of above the data center room and, you know, right when I started, when I walked I walked in the room one day, and there was water dripping on our servers, believe oh it or not. Gosh. And oh it was actually gosh. some of our critical servers. And so, you know, right when I saw that, I just went like, wow. I mean, I knew we had to, had to go and upgrade this stuff. But I said, we really need to get to the cloud. And we need to <laughs> rethink this whole strategy around using servers, you know, get a new application, get a new server and then plug it in. That's not working for us anymore. So, um, and maybe you know, like and, yeah. don't put servers beneath like any pipes that have water <laughs> flowing through them, but like that's another story, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, some we probably should have checked out beforehand, but um, <laughs> yeah, great, great advertisement for the cloud there, right? Um, yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't think Amazon you know puts their water pipes above their servers when you go get space from them or NetSuite. <laughs> well, that's, um, that's, I mean, that's pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And then, you know, there's the, another one and just kind of comes from, you know, in a, the integration experience we have. And this, you know, sometimes integrations, they're, they are kind of funky, but they are critical, right? And in this particular case, you know, I had a customer who came to us who just went live on NetSuite and they had this system that they're running, you know, it was a device laboratory, a medical laboratory, and they had a proprietary system that a guy built, you know, 10 years ago. And he built it on his workstation in the office. And it's been running on that workstation for 10 years. I don't think it ever got turned off. And we literally had to go build an integration from NetSuite into this system underneath this guy's desk um, and get data out of it to go and feed NetSuite for whatever purpose. That's pretty crazy. I mean, you got to negotiate firewalls and stuff to get down to a essentially a PC on somebody's desk. But sometimes that's mandatory. And, you know, the that's that's kind of the power of NetSuite and that platform, the ability to go do that. That was pretty crazy to me. <laughs> but any, just about anything can be done. Right, right. Does your business have trouble managing inventory, projects, or even getting paid on time? Don't let spreadsheets and QuickBooks hold you back. If you want to get your business to a better place, take action now and make the move to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. 
ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need, all in one place, instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 24,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash business. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash business. netsuite.com slash business. Not all integrations are the same. So what sure. issues can arise from piling systems upon systems upon systems? You know, if you're running on QuickBooks and you're piling on, you know, uh, a CRM and an, an HCM and an inventory management system and a WMS, what kind of issues can arise from this? Yeah, I think it, what it comes down to is is sort of managing it. You know, it's kind of one thing to have you just keep kind of adding things in, just you know, ad hoc. It's you got to make sure it all sort of works together, and that's the first thing. Is that it? Maybe it'll work one day, but then when it comes time to go do testing, if one of them's going to do an upgrade, you got to spend a ton of time to make sure that everything still works. Which would happen kind of with any system, I guess you're integrating to. But if you're doing it because of a deficiency in the core platform. You know, you're just going to keep adding stuff and that's just, it's just going to become a better to manage. And then, you know, as anybody knows, who's done the integration management and troubleshooting. It's, you know, sometimes you don't know where it's coming from. And if it's that core QuickBook system or something like that, you know, in the middle, you might not know where to go. And so then you've got to have other tools, you know, to add one more on top of it to maybe tell you where things are, you know, data is flowing and where the tool trouble might be. So it's, it just becomes burdensome, you know? And at that point you start looking like, we just got a whole bunch of stuff that's sitting out here kind of kind of piled together. It sort of works, but at any moment in time could break. And that's not where you want to be if you're scaling, right? That's, right. that's not where you want to put your effort, um, especially when there's other platforms that can do more of those things in a very efficient manner. Now, I don't want to say that there's one system that can solve all the world's problems because there isn't. But there are systems that can do much more than others. And you don't have to just constantly kind of like the iPhone thing where you just add an app every time you want functionality like that. Right. That's cool. That's cool in the iPhone, but not so much in enterprise, you know, IT. Right. You know? Right. So then at what point does a business need to consider replacing their system for a mm. more, you know, unified business solution, obviously like NetSuite? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, a couple of different things. So my my thing is. When I, I talk to, to customers that, you know, are looking at something like NetSuite, it's, do you have multiple lines of business that you need to manage at a very detailed level? Are you acquiring businesses? Are you multinational? You know, that type of thing are kind of the big ones for me, um, because those typically kind of kick you up into the mid-market tier of ERPs and the stuff that it's, it's big boy toys. It's starting to get <laughs> serious and it can scale all the way up to whatever. I don't know if we found any limitations on, you know, NetSuite type products. So that's kind of where I start. But then it also comes back to the other things um, of what sort of gets annoying in these other little platforms is it's the reporting, the in-depth reporting, it's the visibility into the business. It's that revenue recognition stuff, any type of detailed analysis on what you're selling, what you're buying, you know, that type of thing. Once you start wanting that and you go back to your, your system today and you can't get it, at least at a baseline, and there's a tool for it or an app, that's when you start going, okay, now I got to get 20 apps to go do what I wanted to do. Can I at least get a system to wait maybe where I need five, you know, something to that effect. Right. Yeah. Nope. That makes sense. I love what you said. You know, once you start acquiring business, you have multiple subsidiaries. Like at that point, then are you like, do you have like a million systems for each subsidiary like that? And then you're trying to figure it all out once you yeah. continue to grow or, or well, what happens there? I think it's, you know, it's also about business strategy and kind of where where the company is going to go, right? And, right. you know, a lot of the companies we're working with are in a position where they're mid-market or growing and they're, they're positioning themselves for either multiple acquisitions or to be acquired, right? And, you know, if you just go acquire somebody and you've got a subsidiary and you just have them on QuickBooks and you acquire somebody else and they're on QuickBooks and now you got these 20 companies on QuickBooks, 
Well, if you want to go and do some kind of a transaction or even get financing to go buy another company, it's you've got to have all that put together and it's got to be really clean. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest problems I see some of these companies having is that trying to put all that together, now you need a data science team and like a, like a business analytics tool <laughs> to try to bring it all together. Now when, we're adding more tools. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so why not, right? Yeah. Um, and when that platform, those platforms are just not meant for that type of thing, right? Yeah. And sure. especially when you're, you know, you're trying to get acquired, or maybe you are acquired, and a lot of the, you know, private equity companies out there, and um, they're they're sort of demanding this type of thing. Like, we need your business to be organized before we can make an investment or help you, you know, grow your business even more. So it's not even internal pressure. There's external pressure for that if that's the direction you want to take your company as well. Now we we talked about this before. Not all integrations though are the same. So when does it make sense to integrate with a system versus replace? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I kind of look at it this way, and I'll, I'm going to bring back my friends over at uh, ConnectWise for ConnectWise Manage. ConnectWise Manage is very good at providing you know a platform for managed IT services. That is just they're really good at it, right? And they're making very strategic investments and acquisitions around that. And so I kind of look at the tool sets that are needed for the to make the business run most efficiently. And you know, in that case. They're very, they're very good at what they do. And in the case of having NetSuite as an ERP, that's very good at what they do. You've got two besting class tools, right? And in that certain case, it probably wouldn't be prudent. And I'll say this because I actually tried it to go rebuild the functionality of ConnectWise Manage into NetSuite. It just doesn't do it as well. And it would take a lot of time and effort. I'm sure you could do it. There's a lot of flexibility in NetSuite. But in that case, that's one of those places where you would integrate it, right? It does something very specific and very well. So that's kind of my litmus test, I guess, if you, you know, if you're going to want to integrate or build. And then also it comes down to, you know, cost and, and things like that of just, you know, what does it take to maintain this other platform? Right. You know, what can we integrate it? Let's think about this too. If you got two, if you got a platform externally that doesn't even have an open API, but it's the best thing out there for this type of business, and but you can't integrate it. You've got to go and pull data out manually and then manually input it. You know that's one of those decision points as well that we always kind of analyze before we either build a build an integration or we build it on the NetSuite platform. So there's a lot that goes into it. it it's never straightforward. I kind of wish it was, but you know there's <laughs> there's there's all, a lot of options in there for sure. Yeah. So what's unique about NetSuite specifically in its platform for integrating? So I'll keep it kind of simple. I'm not the super technical guy and I like being <laughs> simple. You can do anything you want. And I know that's kind of broad and it just sounds kind of weird, but literally we haven't found a lot of things that we can't do. You know, with, with time and money, you can do anything you want with NetSuite. That's kind of, kind, of the, kind of the motto. Aside from that, I think it's the mechanisms you know, of how you can integrate. We've got a couple projects to where, you know, we're, for instance, we're integrating our customers' NetSuite environment into their suppliers, right? And some of these suppliers have been around for a long time and they're still using traditional EDI, right? That's, you know, been around for 50 years or something. That's one way to integrate, right? Then there's this other supplier that says, oh yeah, we have this API that you can connect right into from NetSuite. Cool. Then we got another supplier that says, oh, we only do things via FTP where you got to drop a file on a server and then NetSuite has to go get it. Okay, cool. Then there's the ones that they just can't do anything. <laughs> but NetSuite's got this other you know, piece of functionality where you can we can email a CSV file to a <laughs> special email address and NetSuite will pull it in and do something with it. I mean, how cool is that, that we can pretty much bring data into NetSuite in all these different ways and make the data useful. And I think that's the biggest, that's the most powerful thing right there. It's kind of throw any situation at us and there's a way to go and automate, you know, getting this integration built, um, which is the purpose anyways, to get some sort of automation and data flowing back and forth. Right. Do other competitors do this as well as NetSuite? You know, it, it's a great question. I would say that if anybody does, it's probably Salesforce and that platform they have just because they've been around for a while. But when it comes to a pure play ERP, I don't I don't think so. And there's a couple, couple of reasons why. The, first of all, all those mechanisms, the open API of NetSuite and getting data in and out, that's that's just great. The other one is the the community of folks like me who have developed native integrations on the NetSuite platform. 
you know, there's, there's people that have gone out and built, you know, uh, like ADP, the big payroll, you know, company, somebody has got an integration for that. That's already built for NetSuite. Great. You buy a license to it and the integrations and built. you turn it on, you know, it works a little harder than that, but you know what I mean? Um, (laughs) but there's this community of people who have used these tool sets on NetSuite to build all this stuff and it just keeps growing. And I don't think anybody can match that even close. There's just a really, it's a really nice way um, of just integrating systems when you find the need and they're, they're pre-built. There's other pl- people that have built kind of platforms in the middle to, you know, make data go back and forth. And then there's, you know, folks like us where we can just kind of create something out of nothing and build the integration from scratch. So I think that's what's unique. And that community and the support that NetSuite gives us to go and build these things to connect other, other systems is, is outstanding. Bringing this kind of full circle here. So let's just say I, I'm a growing business leader and I just think, you know, my organization is too small for a solution like NetSuite. Maybe I've already started, you know, duct taping systems onto my current, you know, platform, QuickBooks, Excel, whatever. What would you say if a business leader thought their organization was too small for NetSuite just now? I'd say come back to me in a year when your growth has doubled and I told you so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things and it, it is, it is tough, um, especially for you know somebody who thinks they're too small, but they're also growing. And so they don't have the bandwidth, but the thing is, is it gets harder as you diversify your business, as you make acquisitions, as you do all that stuff and you, in, you exponentially grow, it gets harder and harder to go and move into a new ERP. A ERP yeah. is not, it's not easy. Everybody knows that. And, and moving into one is, it takes a lot of time. And so, yeah, I would say it's, you're never too, too small. If your plans are to grow and go look, look yourself in the mirror, say, where do you want to be in a year or two or five and plan for that. And you don't want to be doing, you know, ERP in the middle of a hyper growth phase. That's for sure. Um, that wouldn't be a lot of fun. And we want to have fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and I'm glad you kind of brought, you know, moving into an ERP. There's so much fear around implementation, but having yeah. been through implementations yourself, what advice do you have for successful implementations? Wine, you know, and happy <laughs> hours. No. Um, <laughs> I like I would, that. <laughs> first thing is don't rush it. Um, I've made this mistake myself and, you know, I try to counsel my customers as much as I can, but, and there's always deadlines, you know, the bigger the company, the bigger the deadlines, but you don't want to rush it. You want to be thoughtful. That's number one. Number two, best practices, you know, follow some of the outlines that people like NetSuite have spent years and 20,000 customers developing. You know, they've got these templates. This is what a lot of people in your industry use. Use those, use those as much as you can. And all that stuff that you think is so special about you, you again, kind of look in your mirror, look in the mirror and just say, all right, am I that special or can I use some of these best practices? And that'll save you a ton of time and money. Be mindful of time, you know, take your time, don't rush it, adhere to best practices. And I think keep an open mind, you know, when you're going through these implementations, there'll be these crossroads of right and left decisions you'll have to make where you might have to dramatically change the way you're doing business, but it may be for the better good of growing for the next few years or being more efficient in some other area. And so when you're implementing an ERP, that's the time to go and make these wholesale changes. So keep an open mind. Um, and then I, I guess just be brave. Like it's, it's just, it's a lot, but it sets you up for success. And I think the results are just outstanding once you get one of these systems in place and what you can do with it. So if you're going through something, you know, there's a uh, tens of thousands of other businesses who have gone through it too. So uh, that's right. That's right. I, I, I like that. So to summarize here, Jeff, what do businesses need to look for? when considering integration versus replacement, like three main things to look for. I'd say the first thing is, is that thing you're looking to integrate or replace still best in class, right? Is Mm -hmm. it just, are they, and I guess I'll kind of fold all these together. Is it best in class? Meaning is it, is it still the market leader? Are they up and coming? Are they investing, you know, in that product? I, I really like to look at those things because if they're not, you know, somebody else will, and then maybe you look at integrating that, or then maybe that's an opportunity to replace it and, you know, build it, you replace it with a core ERP or build it yourself on an ERP platform. The other thing too, is that I I find this a lot when you're implementing ERP, you look at those integrations that you want to do and you, then you, you take a look at the ERP and you go, Hmm, you know, that integration, that product we have, the integration we want to build for that product 
you know, now it doesn't really serve the same purpose as it did a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Now that we have changed processes in other areas. So does it still do the same thing you need it to do now that you've got a new core ERP? That's another thing to look at. And then again, just back to kind of the vendor side of it, you know, what's the roadmap look like? What's this product going to do? And can, you know, is there enough in that product roadmap to convince you to keep this thing standing there, integrate it into the ERP, or again, build it on top of the ERP or look for another product? Three solid, solid tips there, Jeff. I really appreciate you coming on. This was a great conversation. And I, I you know, I don't think it'll be the last. I think there's many more where that came from. So thanks so much. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Sounds good to me. Thanks for having me. So there you have it. The top three things to look for in considering system integrations or replacement. Whether your current systems are best in class, how your processes may change by implementing new systems, and what your roadmap looks like for all of that. Thank you so much to Jeff Smith for joining us on this episode. I also want to shout out to our editing crew over at Lampstand and all of you for tuning in. If you like what you heard, don't forget rate, review, and subscribe. Adios. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.